any underwater metal on those bolts is probably tied into that circuit. And so now we've got essentially a giant battery. Hello and welcome to another one of our boat how to ask the expert sessions. I'm Jan and we're talking to Nigel Calder. Hi. Today's question is the following. I deal mostly with center console boats with outboard motors. I know a galvanic isolator is more appropriate on a boat with an inboard engine and AC shore power. When does a boat need a galvanic isolator and how should it be hooked up? What am I protecting the boat from? Well, what do you think, Nigel? That's a good question. Um, the type of boat is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if it's a sailboat or a center console or a power cruiser or whatever. The critical issue here is if you have a shore power insulation and you're bringing shore power on the boat and you don't have an isolation transformer. And when we bring the shore power on the boat, we have a grounding conductor that's connected to all our outlets on the boat and on most of our boats is in some way connected to the water. And when you plug into shore power, that grounding conductor is now connected to the dock and any other boat that's plugging in is also connected to the dock through its grounding conductor and to the water through its grounding conductor. So now we have a big loop from one boat to another through the grounding conductors. And any underwater metal on those boats is probably tied into that circuit. And so now we've got essentially a giant battery and we eat up one of the metal components on one or other boat, depending on which one is more reactive in that environment. And the galvanic isolator breaks that circuit between the boats so that we don't no longer have that battery in effect. And then we don't destroy the underwater metal on one or other boat. The issue here is, do you have shore power uh, without an isolation transformer? And if the answer is yes, then you need a galvanic isolator regardless of uh, what type of boat it is. And that galvanic isolator goes in the system immediately after the shore power inlet on your hull. Um, and it goes into the grounding conductor. We've got still in existence, especially in the States, tens of thousands of galvanic isolators from 30, 40 years ago, which don't really work very well and may have failed anyway in the shorted position. So look at your galvanic isolator, if you've got one, and see if it's got the AVYC sticker on there. I forget which standard it is, but it'll say whether it complies with AVYC, whatever the standard is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it does, then we've essentially got a, a much better galvanic isolator than what we had decades ago. And if you've got one little one that's about this size with a lot of fins on it, it's probably not ABYC compliant one and you should actually throw it away and install a new one. All right. Well, thanks, Nigel, for your take on that. And if you want to learn more about shore power connections on boats and how to safely wire them, check out our advanced marine electrics program at boathowto.com, where we teach you all about this to make sure you're safe on the water. See you next time.